A good evening, Celebrate Recovery. It is October 27th, 2020, and uh, we have worship, eight principles and 12 steps, and then we're gonna dive into a message on gratitude tonight. We'll see you in a minute.
I'm a grateful believer in Jesus, and I struggle with codependency and an eating disorder and exercise addiction. And I'm going to go ahead and share the eight principles tonight. So if you'll read along with me, I'm going to start with number one. Realize I'm not God. I admit that I am powerless to control my tendency to do the wrong thing and that my life is unmanageable. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. Number two, earnestly believe that God exists, that I matter to him, and that he has the power to help me recover. Happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Number three, consciously choose to commit my life and will to Christ's care and control. Happy are the meek, Matthew 5.5. 5. Number four, openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and to someone I trust. Happy are the pure in heart, Matthew 5, 8. Number five, voluntarily submit to every change God wants to make in my life and humbly ask him to remove my character defects. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires, Matthew 5, 6. Number six, E, evaluate all my relationships. Offer forgiveness to those who have hurt me and make amends for harm I've done to others, except when to do so would harm them or others. Happy are the merciful, Matthew 5, 7. Happy are the peacemakers, Matthew 5, 9. Number seven, R, reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer in order to know God and his will for my life and to gain the power to follow his will. And number eight, Y, yield myself to God to bring this good news to others, both by my example and by my words. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. Matthew 5.10 Good evening, everyone. I get to do 12 steps with you tonight. My name is Steve Woods. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm an alcoholic and a drug addict. I struggle with relationships and anger issues. I'm really glad to be here with you tonight. Pay attention to these steps. Pay attention to the Lord. Step one, we admitted we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors, that our lives had become unmanageable. I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. Bible verse, Romans 7, 18. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Philippians 2, 13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Step three, made a decision to turn our wills and our lives over to the care of God. Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Lamentations 3.40. Let us examine our ways and test them, and let us return to the Lord. Step five, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. James 5.16. Therefore, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Six, we are entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. James 4.10 Step seven, we humbly asked him to remove all our shortcomings. John, 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Step eight, we made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Luke 6.31, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Step nine, we made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Matthew 5.23 and 24. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there at the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Step 10, we continue to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Ooh, tough one. Bible verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 12. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. 11, my personal favorite. We sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Colossians 3, 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And step 12, Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, it does say that right here in the steps, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Galatians 6.1, brothers, 
If someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore them gently. But watch yourself, or you may also be tempted. God bless you in this day. Don't be too tempted. God always has a way for us to overcome temptation. Stick together, and let's see you soon. Awesome. Thank you guys for being here today. We have a message on gratitude. It is in principle seven and step 11. Principle seven says this, reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer in order to know God and his will for my life and to gain the power to follow his will. Step 11 says, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and power to carry that out. Colossians 3.16 says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. Now tonight, we're going to focus our attention outward rather than inward. We've taken many steps on our road to recovery, and let's do a little recap. Our first step was to admit that we were and are powerless. Our second step led us to choose once and for all a power by which to live. We took our third and most important step when we chose to turn our lives and wills over to the only true higher power, Jesus Christ. As we continued our journey, we grow in our conscious contact with God, and He begins to unfold in our lives, and it's a beautiful process. And as we begin to grow in our understanding of Him, we begin to live out the decision we made in Principle 3. We keep walking now in peace as we maintain inventories on a regular basis and as we continue to deepen our relationship with Christ. The way we do this, according to Principle 7, is to reserve a daily time with God. During this time, we focus on Him by praying and meditating. Prayer is simply talking to God. Meditation is listening to God on a daily basis. When we meditate, we don't get into some yoga-type position and go, hum. That's, that's not what we're talking about at all when it comes to meditation. Meditation is simply to focus on and think about God or a certain scripture verse or maybe even just one or two words. I've had times with God where I'll be praying and ask God certain things and I've gotten answers and direction. And I'll be honest with you, it's the coolest thing to spend that time with God and for him to lead you somewhere. Uh, and sometimes I don't hear from God because I need to shut up. So <laughs> there's always that part too. Now, some years I do great with prayer and other years I, I need a kick in the pants, honestly, to be a little more disciplined. Uh, and I don't always feel like being disciplined. Um, if you've ever uh, tried to work out or diet or, or do anything consistently that you know is good for you, you kind of understand what I'm talking about. But when I am disciplined, it's amazing. I, I love having a strong prayer life and time with God in the, in the, at some point in the day. Uh, I just think it changes your mind and makes you more like God. And make no mistake, Satan will try to do everything he can to interrupt our quiet time with God. And it's a great strategy. We're too tired. We're too busy. There's always something. That new show has come on or whatever it is. Kids are going crazy. Um, job is, is crazy. There's always something that can come up to steal our time with God. And we have to guard that. And we have to do our best to push through that. Now, if Satan can separate us from God, we won't display the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Uh, all nine of those, those things won't come out like they would if we're spending time with God. But through daily working the principles to the best of our ability, however, we can learn to drown out the distractions most of the time. I've learned to listen to God who tells me that I have great worth, and he will say the same to you if you will listen. And when I'm consistent with daily time with God, I notice a difference. I'm more peaceful. I'm less stressed. Uh, I'm more full of God uh, instead of just full of it. Uh, I'm a wiser and more diligent version of Josh, just being honest. Uh, this is one way I choose to live one day at a time and one way we can prevent relapse. We can also follow the principles taught week in and week out here at Celebrate Recovery. Another way to prevent relapse, especially during the holidays, is by maintaining an attitude of gratitude. This week before we celebrate Thanksgiving in just a few weeks, I suggest that your prayers be focused on your gratitude in four areas of your life, toward God, toward others, your recovery, and your church. Those four areas, we can start talking about how grateful we are for uh, many things in those four categories. I think it's going to give us a positive mindset. Uh, so what I want you to do this week is I want you to do that. Uh, tonight, maybe in your groups or wherever you're at, Make a list of all four of those things and start talking about areas that you are gra uh, you're grateful for, okay? Now, what I think would be cool is if you write these four categories out, again, toward God, toward others, your recovery, and your church, and you start writing what you're thankful for and praying it every day, uh, I think we might have more of a gratitude and a gratefulness to God rather than thinking about the things that we don't have. Now, 
uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, talk first about the first part of gratitude, and that is uh, thankful toward God, grateful toward God. So let me ask you this. What are you grateful for toward God? What, what, what things has God done for you that maybe you've never even thought of or maybe things that are at the forefront of your mind that you're grateful for? Okay, You can offer prayers of gratitude to your creator. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says this, Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Psalm 107, 15 encourages us to give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and wonderful deeds for mankind. What wonderful deeds they truly are. And what are at least two areas of your life in which you can see God's work and that you are thankful for this holiday season? You can reflect on the last 11 months or on what God has done for you this week or even today. Then take a moment to list just a few of the special things for which you're grateful and thankful for to your higher power. The next area to, to list is the individuals whom God has placed in your life to walk alongside you on your road of recovery. We need to be thankful for others. Now, Colossians 3, 15 and 16 says this, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other and step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing and cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. So let me ask you, who are you thankful for? Take a moment to list them. Number three, the third area we can be thankful for is our recovery. Hebrews chapter 12, verse one says this, as for us, we have this large crowd of witnesses around us. So then let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way and of the sin which holds on to us so tightly and let us run with determination the race that lies before us. So what are two recent gro uh, growth areas of your recovery for which you're thankful? Again, go ahead and list them. And the fourth and the final area is to be thankful for your church, okay? Uh, what, are, what part of your church are you thankful for? And if you don't have a church, I pray that you talk to someone uh, within the next 24 hours about possibly going to their church or getting a recommendation. Uh, we just believe that church coupled with recovery those two different days are a beautiful thing, okay? We, we think the chances of you recovering are so much higher when you focus more on God instead of just recovery or going to church without recovery. Those two together are a nice one-two punch. We believe that. Uh, Psalm chapter 100 verse 4 says this regarding church, enter the temple gates with thanksgiving. So what two things are you thankful for to your church? Or maybe if you had, if you're not currently going to church, Maybe you have in the past. What things were you grateful for in that church setting? So uh, what I would like for you guys to do is make that gratitude list tonight and put out all four categories and put it in a place where you'll see it often. And it will remind you that you have made progress in your recovery and that you're not alone, that Jesus Christ is always with you. Using your gratitude list, go into your recovery meetings and making them a priority and getting involved in service in your church are the best ways that we know of to prevent relapse during the holidays. So I hope you guys will dive into those things. Uh, your recovery is worth it. Absolutely. God's pulling for you, and so are we. So let's close in prayer. God, thank you for tonight for everybody here that is watching this. I pray, Lord, that we would continue to recover, that the holidays don't have to trip us up, that God help us to get a game plan now and help us to anticipate the things that we may encounter so we can start putting a game plan now and asking you to help us starting right now. We don't have to wait until the holidays. But God, we're grateful for so many things, and I pray this week we would put a lot of emphasis on the things that we're grateful for in those four categories and that you would have your way with us and that we would have more of a positive mindset and be grateful instead of bitter about maybe something that we don't have or a life that we didn't get growing up. We can be grateful for where we're at and where we're going. And God, I pray that, that you would work in us that positive mindset to thank you first in our lives and to be grateful to you for all you've done. We love you, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. All right. That is our message for tonight. Thank you guys for coming. We'll see you next week. My name is Doug. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ, and I struggle with sexual addiction, and I'm really happy to be here with you guys tonight. Um, uh, the serenity prayer has been extremely helpful for me throughout this whole ordeal with the COVID virus because there's a lot of things that I used to think I had control over that I don't have control over anymore. Um, and uh, accepting those things at times it gets to be difficult, but if you would please join me in the uh, serenity prayer. 
God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you in the next. In Christ's precious name we pray, amen. Thank you all, hope to see you soon. And here are your small group questions for tonight. What's one thing you took away from tonight's teaching? Why do you think it's important to maintain an attitude of gratitude in your recovery? And number three, in what three areas of your recovery are you especially thankful for God's power? Try to think of areas of growth or positive change in you that only God could have accomplished. That's all for tonight. Thank you guys for being here. Come back next week. Keep coming back.